Hello, and welcome to our Step Up AT Improving Literacy Through Technology coaching video series. In this video, you will learn about a framework that helps us focus on the child's goals and how to plan for authentic AT practice right in the teacher's classroom. This is Jaden. Good morning, Jaden. Before watching this video, be sure to check out our introductory videos on practice-based coaching or PBC, including the four sessions in a cycle by visiting our Step Up AT website at stepupat.org. Okay. This will give you all the background information you will need to fully understand the planning process. For some children, learning new skills can be challenging and the typical classroom accommodations may not be enough. If a child is having difficulties reading, writing, communicating, or simply participating in classroom activities, assistive technology may be the key in supporting the child's learning and development. But how can peer coaches help teachers consider the right AT tools and strategies to introduce? Since there are different variables to consider for any AT tool to be successful, it's important to be consistent and follow the same framework with every child. The SEP framework created by Joy Zavala in 1996 is a four-part model that encourages teachers to examine these variables in a systematic way, understanding and gathering data about the following. The student. What are the child's needs or weaknesses and his or her abilities or strengths? If the child has an individual education plan or IEP already, what is the present level of performance towards measurable goals? The environments. What are the child's educational routines? What are the instructional and physical arrangements at school that could prevent the child from being successful at a given task? The tasks. What is it that the child needs to accomplish? Or what are some of the child's IEP goals and objectives? What are the expectations for the child during those activities and within their classroom environment? AT tools. What accommodations, strategies, and solutions should be considered? What AT tool options would best match the child's needs? How might these tools be used? How about Lorenzo to use some words? Perfect. When considering AT, it is in the best interest of the child to include everyone involved in the child's education, from the appropriate educational and related service professionals to the caregivers. Yes, this right here, we're going to be using this with him. In this way, we can have a complete picture of the child's strengths and challenges in their daily lives and across different environments. You have to pull. Now that you understand the framework, let's see how we can use it in this program. Arrange a time to meet with your teacher, either in person or remotely, to start the goal planning. I see you. We call this session one. Lots of discussion and reflection will happen during session one, so it's best to ensure the teacher can meet for an uninterrupted period of time, about 30 to 60 minutes. Session one begins with a review of the TSNA. Then you and the teacher will begin discussing the needs of the students in his or her current class. Where do you see the alignment between what the teacher wants to learn and the students at hand? Remember, the goal of the first cycle is identifying the student and their needs. If this student already has an IEP, this will also be helpful. Resources that you use here? When you have identified the student, crafting the Assistive Technology Implementation Plan, or ATIP, will be easy when you think about the SEP framework. That's dealing with so you can be able to you know, talk mm. more? Yes, we can have to look. This teacher-led discussion is the time for the teacher to consider the strengths and needs of the student in terms of the environment, task, and tool. It depends on like this. So with this, it helps them to hold the yes. pencil the right way. Let's follow along as this teacher talks with her coach about a particular student and puts together an A tip for her first cycle. I'm very excited to begin the cycle with you. Me too. I think if Sammy can find ways to express himself better, he will be able to enjoy his day so much more. Yes, I agree. So we will be working with Sammy, and you said you want to give him opportunities to comment during reading, correct? Oh, yes. I can see how much he wants to participate and be able to share during read-aloud time every day. Okay, so the task will be participating during shared reading. I usually allow the students to join in with a repetitive sentence while I am reading, 
and I feel that Sammy would enjoy being able to join his peers. Well, there's an AAC device called the Big Mac that you can program ahead with that phrase so that the repetitive sentence can be read out loud. While completing the A-tip, the teacher also discusses with her peer coach her classroom routine, environment, and different tasks she wants to assist the child with. The teacher uses this information to guide her coach in selecting a particular task to focus on and reminds her that the TSNA priority was focused on using alternative and augmentative communication. If I remember correctly, one of our goals was to incorporate more AAC in the classroom, right? Yes, and that sounds like a solid plan. There are many libraries that you can use to print symbols to represent your phrases. And let's talk about how the classroom assistant can help you with setting up the Big Mac and giving Sammy opportunities to use it during shared reading. The A-tip also considers the types of visual supports and the instructional staff that will be involved to support the proper implementation of the A-tip. Once you have finished the A-tip, the focus goes back to the teacher as you use the TSNA and the A-tip for the third and final piece, the action plan. To learn more about Step Up AT's practice-based coaching, don't forget to check out the rest of our coaching video series by visiting stepupat.org. Thank you for watching.